Hi there. My name is Ray Chambers and I'm a teacher at Uppingham Community College and uh, thanks for coming along to this presentation. Sorry I couldn't be there with you guys but um, uh, I'm going to be talking about Minecraft in education and how you can use it to inspire some of your students whether they be higher ability, lower ability and uh, hopefully uh, you'll get something from this presentation. So thank you for coming along. So I'm currently the Head of Computing at Uppingham Community College where we teach roughly about 900 students. Uh, we teach uh, Key Stage 3 Computer Science and we've been doing that for a couple of years. Uh, as, as soon as Ofsted left our door, we, we kind of got ahead of the game and decided let's go for it. Uh, also we teach Key Stage 4, the OCR TCSE curriculum and Minecraft has been a great way for us to actually demonstrate some of the logic gates within the computing curriculum. Uh, in 2015 I won the National Teaching Award for Innovative Use of Technology and if you want to keep up with what I've been doing in computing you can either follow me on Twitter at LankyBoyRay. Unfortunately I couldn't be there so you can't see me standing up right now but um, hence the reason I'm slouching on this chair. Uh, but if you want to find some of my resources you'll be able to find them on raychambers.wordpress.com and in about five weeks I'll be joining the Brook Western Trust so uh, if you want to get hold of me at a school in about five weeks I'll be t teaching at Brook Western Academy in Corby. So lots of people ask me why Minecraft, why, why use this in the lessons, what educational value does it have? Well the bottom line is uh, my students Whenever they came into the lessons, one of the things that I could always strike up a conversation with them over was Minecraft. They would tell me what they did at home, they would tell me some of the crazy things that they had built. And to be honest, I thought, well, what is Minecraft? Let's give it a go. And upon opening it, I found out that it's basically whatever you want it to be. Imagine you had a box full of Lego in your classroom, you can build whatever you want, and Depending on the imagination, you can make pretty much whatever you like. So what's the big deal? Well, when you open up Minecraft, you can set it up to however you want it to be. You can set up collaborative worlds, you can set up servers, you can set up just empty worlds with nothing in it. And what they're able to do is that you can set it up for them to dig, you can set it up for them to mine, they can make different things. Uh, some of the things that I've had my students make are museums, computer science museums. So around this museum you might navigate and then they will teach me all about how to stay safe online. They'll teach me about computer hardware or software and it's a visual world so actually you can get other students popping into each other's world to actually have a look at what they've built and you can create whatever you like doesn't have to be used in just computer science. You can actually get them to create stories and use it within English. And it's called a sandbox game because there are no goals to it. You can create whatever you like in whatever time you like. And it's been a great help for some of my students, particularly with those uh, of SEN that can now communicate and collaborate more effectively because of it. So one way that I can demonstrate how Minecraft can be useful in the classroom is the curriculum. Bottom line is, you can use it in whatever subject you like really, depending on the subject knowledge obviously. So one way that it can be used in English is you can actually use the book and quill and you can start to get your students to write books. And actually, if you put a book in a server, you can put the book in a crate and then another student can come along and edit that book and you can basically have the whole class working together to finish off a story. And then what you can do when the stories are finished, you can store them in crates and you can actually build up a library over time and encourage more students to do reading. In maths, uh, here's one example of how it was used. You can see on the screen in front of you that actually what we did in the server is we decided to bury some treasure and we got the students to actually look at the coordinates to find it but then we talked about the rotation of it and one of our maths teachers at Uppingham Community College has actually talked about doing different views and it's helped some students with their nets. Uh, in science we had one student here who has actually made the whole respiratory system 
And as you go through that body, you can see all the different parts. Not to mention history, I uh, talk about Rome, and you can actually get them to recreate Rome and actually think and do some research about the type of things that would be seen at that time. They will actually be more keen to do the research if they've got to build it. So it's one thing that's worked really well. So how did we go about embedding Minecraft into the school? Well, the first thing that we started to do is we had some digital leaders. Now, these students were in charge of how they could use technology to make things better around the school. So whether it be a radio, whether it be blogging, whether they be making digital content for their teachers who may have not been as confident. And what we kind of said to these guys is, can you go and think of how we could use Minecraft in other areas of learning? What ways would it be used? Because at the end of the day, if students want to do this, giving them some ownership over it also makes them more engaged, particularly if they're in a lesson and they're like, that's my world, I made that, so that's pretty good. Student voice is very, very, is a, a key point to using Minecraft because at the end of the day, we're not all experts on Minecraft and if you've got young children, they probably tell you a lot about how to use it, what they've been doing. So sometimes it's a really good idea to actually get students leading the lesson. As long as you fill in the subject content, they can stand up and lead the lesson and actually some of your students would actually wouldn't mind helping you plan lessons. And that's what's worked really well where students have got the most out of it at Uppingham Community College. So on this slide here, you can see an example of one of our lesson plans. Now, what we started to get some of our students to do is we gave them a five minute lesson plan. And to be honest, it confused them to begin with. They had no idea the amount of work that we have to put in as teachers into planning a good lesson. And uh, they, were, they were like, well, what's progress? What's this? What's that? I was like, well, when we teach you a lesson, we have to make sure that you've actually understood it. And they took that away and they put some five minute lesson plans together. And then afterwards, I would look over these to see whether they were useful, whether there are some changes that they could make to them. Uh, because to be honest, some of the students, when they were thinking about it, they were thinking about how they could use Minecraft rather than the learning. So if you're going to do some work with your kids and you're going to do it as a joint project, I do recommend that you kind of collaborate with your students. And it's good, it gives them a bit of an ego boost when they see that they've done something well, and particularly if they see it being used in the lesson. So what I'm about to show you here are some examples of some worlds that students have made and they've uploaded to Minecraft EDU so that they can actually show you some of the science or some of the English, some of the ways that it can be used in lessons. So what we have here is the respiratory system and what you can see is at the bottom uh, you can enter in through a door just on the left. Now as you go in there you can go up and he's actually managed using water and he's managed to use redstone to actually get the heart pumping around. So that's been one really good resource that a student has made. Here's another resource that has been made by four students. We had some year nines and year tens working together. And what they did is they did the rise and fall of the monarchs. So when there were some really, really high points, uh, say for example, when Henry VIII was, uh, when, he, when he got married, the cart would actually go up and put a sign in front of the student to say what that high point was. Then maybe when Henry had had uh, enough of his wife, if you know what I mean, uh, it would be a low point. So then it would show you the cart going down and then it would pause for a minute with the information so that the students could take in. And that would be a good starter for a lesson. So if you were in a computer room, you could actually get the students to actually say, go along the, the train track, write down what you found out, and then you can have it as a discussion point. So you don't necessarily have to get them on Minecraft for the whole lesson. You can use it as just a kind of start or something to engage them. This example here was made by a year nine and a year seven student working together. And what they decided to do is make a maths game within Minecraft. So what they did, if you look on the left print screen here, there are three switches on the wall and there was a quiz question. And if they got the question correct, 
it dropped them down a level, so the floor disappeared. So they'd used redstone so that if they got it correct, they dropped through to the next level. And the idea was to actually get through each floor until you'd got to the bottom of the world. So that was one way that they made a multiple choice quiz. Hackers. Hackers are people who break codes by using passwords or changing programming code to gain illegal access to computers to steal data and break things you can protect your computers with IDS pa IDS password passwords access rights logs and much more thanks one unauthorized access to computers materials looking at other people's files and offense to and offers access with to commit or facilitate a crime where someone intends to break the law after logging on as someone else. Offense 3. Unauthorized modification of computer. Material deletion of files, changing files, viruses, alter programs. Offense 3A. Making, supplying or obtaining material that can be used in computer misuse offences like creation of viruses, giving other people viruses to use. And it's all, and that's all. Thank you for watching. Shout out to Tom who helped help me make this car, this temple thing and help me write all the signs. So, yeah. Bye. So on my previous slide, you would have seen that the students have actually done some homework that uses Minecraft. So what this student did in the video, although it's not quite clear, is he got a whole world with internet safety tips. And as you navigate the world, the different tips are on the wall. So that's what he was doing. And he did that at home on his computer and recorded that video and brought that in for me. Now, ways that you can get hold of Minecraft EDU is you can actually go onto the Minecraft website. Now, recently, Minecraft EDU has been attained by Microsoft and a new version will be out soon. Um, so if you check that website, there may be some updates, but I'm hearing that there's going to be some pretty cool things in this update. Uh, but also, if you're interested, uh, Tablet Academy offers some training. So what you can do is through Tablet Academy, uh, speak to them, organize some training, and so, some people will come out to your school and actually train you up. They'll train people around you. They'll, they'll give you some tips and show you some worlds and help you to start using this with your students. Now, a lot of people are probably freaking out right now about how you could actually use this in the classroom. There's, a, there's some ideas there, but you don't know where to get started. So, if you go onto my blog, raychambers.wordpress.com, I have put a Minecraft tab in there with some ideas for you. There are also some programming tips because you can program within the Minecraft environment. There are wikis. The most important resource that I think would be useful for you are your students. Now, if you talk to your students, they could tell you everything about Redstone. They'll go, they'll talk at you until the cows come home. So I would recommend doing it over a lunchtime or an after school. Um, but there are YouTube tutorials out there. There are also some YouTube tutorials that I've made that will help you if you need them. Uh, if you go on youtube.com forward slash Mr. Ray Chambers, you'll see some YouTube tutorials there to help you with Minecraft EDU. And also, uh, the Minecraft books, you can usually get one book for about £4 in your local Tesco store or local Asda store now, um, so that's pretty useful. Uh, so just use the internet and use what's available and you'll be able to find out so much. And that's how I was able to use this with my students, really. So here are some examples of the resources that you might find on my blog. So if you've never used them before in your life, uh, the middle print screen here is a worksheet that I've made that kind of demonstrates which, how you can use the mouse to navigate, some of the keys to move around like WASD. Uh, on the left, you've got an example of a logic gate. Like I mentioned before, I used it with 
logic gates so that students can understand how the switches work, what an inverter was, uh, so that they've got a better understanding when it comes onto their computer science GCSEs. Uh, you've also got an example of an OR gate here, and when the switches are on, they can actually see what the output is and visualize it within Minecraft. So these are some examples of the resources that I've made. Uh, if You can obviously check out more on raychambers.wordpress.com. Currently, although I'm not sure how much longer, uh, if you go onto the Minecraft EDU website, there are some worlds that you can download, not, not just my own, there are plenty of worlds that other teachers have made and that students have made and that have been uploaded there. Uh, here are free, so there was a precious metals where you have to actually locate using the coordinates and this student grid was really useful for me for kind of keeping the students in their own area so I would load up this student grid and I'd put signs where students were only allowed to build this would stop them from actually being in other people's worlds and if I was in that grid I could actually say yo what are you doing in this can you go back to your own area Pretty, pretty much like a classroom, really. Um, but there are some other resources available to you. Now, if you are a primary school teacher, there will be the Minecraft Switch On book available soon, which has 18 cross-curricular activities in it, which I've helped or co-author. Uh, and if you are able to get hold of that resource, there are lesson plans in there. Uh, which will link into English and maths and other areas of the curriculum. Um, that is supposed to be available sometime this month, but um, just watch this space. That will be one useful resource. And if you go onto the Rising Stars website, you will be able to get hold of a sample so you can see what it's going to be like. So you can see some of the examples that I've taken from the sample here. Uh, we've got a, a lesson one about what it might be like uh, to create your own shelter in the 1940s. We've also got how to install and set it up. And also some worksheets that come with it that you can photocopy and use over time in your lesson. I just want to take, you, take an opportunity to just thank you for coming along to this presentation. Uh, I've talked briefly about how it's used for digging, how it is a sandbox, and how you can simulate the environment that you're in. Uh, we've talked about how it works within lots of different subjects, whether you're primary or secondary. It's a great way to just engage students, particularly students with SEN needs, because they can actually set up a server and you can collaborate and get them typing to other students and working together when they might be scared of that on a one-to-one -one level. Uh, and I've also signposted you and shown you to some resources that might be useful. Um, and if you need any more information, uh, the next slide that's coming up in a moment will give you my contact information. And I look forward to hearing you. In the so uh, if you want to contact me, you can currently contact me by email at chambers underscore r at ucc.rutland.sth.uk. As I said, in about five weeks, I will be uh, starting at Brook Weston in Corby, Northamptonshire. Uh, you can tweet me at LankyBoyRay and you can also find more resources from me on raychambers.wordpress.com. So thank you for coming along and I look forward to hearing from you in the future.